so I think I fucked up by trying to start over from the beginning. I think I just need to read Mr. Mr. Fury. Fury again. <laughs> yes. You're like, that's all I want. That's really all I want. Okay, because um, we also, I found out that Tamlin has, is still working with Highburn. And I was like, after the like summit where they all have the summit. And I was like, are you fucking shitting me? You yeah. dick. Tamlin sucks. So that's why now knowing all of this information, <laughs> like trying to read this and she's all like moon eyes at him. And I'm like, He's so bad. oh my God. I meant to send you a TikTok last night. Once we're done, I'll have to go find it. Okay. Cause it was like, um, it was about that. It was like all the time. It was like a bunch of different ones. And one of them was like all the times that Lucian almost helped oh, favor no. but didn't did I, I send you yeah. that? was it the book club the um the, <laughs> oh the men's oh yeah it was, it the, was like the, the powerpoint powerpoint presentation, presentation. Yeah. yeah okay no super funny and it was just a um it wasn't a picture of even like lucian fan art it was mad eye moody yeah from Harry just, Potter. <laughs> yeah all right <laughs> Woo. super funny Hello, everybody. I'm Kristen. And I'm Rachel. And this is So I'm Watching Outlander, Season 1, Episode 16, the finale. It's called To Ransom a Man's Soul. <sighs> okay, we thought it was the previous one. We've both seen the show multiple times and still can't remember when stuff happens, but... <sighs> Whoa. This is the episode with all of the sexual torture. Yeah. It's pretty bad. It's really bad. If that's something that bothers you... Just watch us and we can just tell you what happened in a clinical way and you don't have to watch the episode. Mm -hmm. There's a couple really good parts, but I think we can get it across. Yeah, for so sure. So they, uh, they rescue Jamie. Mm -hmm. the, the Highland cows. Like at, after credits roll, yeah. you we find Jamie and uh, Jack Randall yeah. like on the cot and yeah. then there's like booming happening. And so Randall goes to look. Well, and for, I think he's just getting up to leave at first. Oh, yeah. Because Jamie is like, you owe me a debt, mm -hmm. it, which is kill me. Mm -hmm. I let you do this. Kill me. And as we all could have imagined, Blackjack Randall's not going to just kill him. It's no, not. No. He's not. He just wants his own stuff. Yep. And so he just sort of smirks at him and then keeps putting on his clothes and leaving. And as, it, as he's walking up the stairs, he starts he hearing the rumbling. And so he's like looking around and then he just gets legit trampled by like 30 Highland cows. They're so cute. At I least, love them. At least 19, but it feels like more than that. Yeah, it's it like really a whole does. herd of Highland cows. They are so cute. Um, he is trampled under a door, but Murtaugh still does not just give him a quick stab in the heart. Do people not follow the rule of the double tap? You know what I mean? Yeah. You double check and just stab him a couple of times. Stab him more. You know? It's it, fine. It's just... All of these men have been to war. They should know that. What do you do when the battle is over? You, you walk around and, and you stab, stab the enemy. Yes! Double tap! All right. You and me, we would have been generals in the I Highland know, we were Army. fucking cleaned up. You're so heartless. No, neither literally neither <laughs> one of us could ever stab a human. I'm no, certain of it. No, 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 no. <laughs> like maybe not even if my life depended on it. <laughs> I think I could if my life depended on it. I really do. I think I, think I would fight. I stabbing is there's just something about stabbing. No, because it's very intimate. Yeah. But I feel like depending on the situation, I feel like there's a darkness in me that could just kind of like <clears throat> right in the gullet. That's fair. That's fair. I feel like I unfortunately wear too much of my darkness on the surface. <laughs> I don't know that there's a big reservoir of it. Well, it takes a lot to get me very angry. And okay. there have been very few people that have witnessed me at that level. And apparently I am very scary. So, <laughs> so. <laughs> yeah, that's how I know for sure that I am not that way because I got very angry today trying to leave the grocery store because I was trying to leave through the appropriate channels. And a woman, an old woman in a Jaguar was up in front of me and stopped at the stop sign and then just sat there for like 90 seconds. And so I started pulling around her and to get out. Mm -hmm. And that was when she started going and honked at me. And I, I was like, no, you sat there to, at a stop sign. It was not a light. It was a sign. No one was coming from anywhere. And I was like, no. And I was furious, like sweating fury the rest of the drive home. Have you ever blacked out from rage before? No. Twice. Yeah. I have twice. <laughs> First time, 
Uh, I completely I, blacked out. I can't remember a thing. No. So <laughs> when I came to, I had ripped an entire bag of clothes to shreds with my bare hands. Oh, God. The second time, I was leaving a voicemail. And so when I was done, I, I hear her like this because my mouth was so dry that my lips just curled underneath my teeth. <laughs> And I left a two minute long voicemail and I don't remember anything I said. <laughs> so don't piss Rachel off. Mm, is I the might moral. see a little sunshine and roses, but <laughs> there <laughs> is a darkness within me, friend. The moral of the story. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I don't, oh, he gets uh, trampled. And so then they are able to rescue Jamie. They all come in. It's it's just like the Blessedly. five of them. It's still just the five of them. It's, mm-hmm. it's Willie, Murtaugh, Angus, Rupert, and Claire. Mm-hmm. And that's it. Um, but they get him, they have a wagon, they are like, let's go, let's get out of here. And they make their way to a monastery, mm-hmm. which is awesome. We meet Father Anselm, who is like a person. Uh, Jamie has known him before, I feel yeah. like. Mm-hmm. he like Because I think he, he studied with them for He a either while. studied there or he hid mm-hmm. there once before mm-hmm. as well. Yeah, and we also see when he's in the wagon because Claire is trying to tend to him and that's yeah. and he's like fighting her off and then actually like chokes her. And because he sees Randall. Yeah. Um, and they, they, this is where they find out about the lavender oil, and she's like, it's used for, like, pain. Healing. Yeah. And um, Murtaugh's like, someone tried to tend to him, question mark. Mm-hmm. And it's like, no. Nope, nope, nope. Nope. I mean, I, I would imagine, like, like, a smidge of it was to for, like, the calming effect of the mm-hmm. lavender is probably part of the reason why he, like, chose it, but boy, howdy. So, yeah, throughout the episode, we get flashbacks to what Jamie has endured. Um, lots of getting raped yep and just then, like a ton of it and then that's when we really see randall weaponizing claire against yeah. him because um when he has the lavender oil he says think of claire think of your wife yeah. and then he says at one point say my name and so jamie says claire yeah. and it's like a <sighs> whole thing and then like jamie because he's having jamie masturbate yeah and so jamie comes and then while like yeah. You know, Randall's inside of him, and then like after it's done, Jamie realizes what happens, and, and he's like, "What? How will she ever forgive you?" And mm-hmm. I'm just sort of like, "For getting raped, like, yeah, it's fine. Like, yeah. she'll be fine." Yeah. And so, Night even said when we were watching the episode, I was like, "Do we not remember when Claire was raped?" And everyone was like, "Well, almost You're fine." I mean, yeah, but eh, yeah, but still. So it's, it's like, like there's there's okay there's multiple things going on because even if Claire had been raped by that guy that she ends up stabbing, mm-hmm. it's that's like proper like because it's a man and a woman and so it's like there's a whole other level of like it because it's gay Mm -hmm. on jamie where it's like i i let a man i like let him have sex with me and i came Mm -hmm. that's bad and i allowed a man to make love to me at that because he even said that i'm like he made love to me and he's he also branded himself although he didn't he never says he made me do it he's Mm -hmm. just like no i did it myself (laughs) i'm like like no he made you do it you were under like (laughs) mind control at that point you weren't like hey do you have your wax seal for letters by any chance why don't you go heat that bitch up but i'm gonna put it right here yeah, i have a great I have idea such a fun idea <laughs> it, he does not do that and so it's like there's a lot of um it's obviously again and obviously it's like the 1740s so mm-hmm. it's like this stuff doesn't really exist but there's a lot of internalized misogyny in jamie oh yeah where he's like it, because randall's a man it's like a whole different ball game for him and and, and i get it to yeah, a yeah, certain yeah. extent absolutely but at the same time he just is like I can't have you touch me and I can't have you look at me because I'm like, I'm, I'm beneath I'm, you. I'm broken and I'm yeah. gross and it's horrible. And I'm just like, she is literally in front of you being like, I want you no matter what the state. Mm-hmm. And he's like, well, it's just pretty words. And I'm at that point, I'm just like, Jamie, I'm going to need you to nut up for a minute. And here. also she broke into a prison twice to come get you. Are come you on. joking me? Pretty words. My yeah. fucking ass. So, Ugh. Yeah, she, um, well, first she confesses all mm-hmm. of her, all of her stuff to, uh, Father Anselm, and he is just sort of, like, miraculous. Yeah, he's like, you're a miracle. <laughs> it's amazing. Mm-hmm. I love it. I love how many people she encounters, because it's quite a while before they, they eventually tell Murta, mm-hmm. but it's a while. Um, I think it's, um, when they have to go back to Scotland because of, yeah. uh, their, yes. because what they work on in France doesn't Correct. work out. Okay, yes. Mm-hmm. It, but I love how, like, basically everyone she tells, because we discussed it with um, with Jamie and then with um, someone else. Who else did she just tell? She just told someone else. Oh, well, Jenny, she alluded. Yes, and so I love that, like, most everybody she tells is just like, 
cool. You got mm-hmm. it. Like, Berta has questions, mm-hmm. but he also is just like, I mean, all right. Well, like, and so in the big difference between, like, Father Bane and Father Ansel, uh, or Ansel, however you say it. I think there's an M at the end. I don't know. But so the one at the monastery. Yeah, Anselm. There you go, Anselm is a Jesuit priest. So in the Jesuits, um, I, I was raised Catholic in, in case you guys don't know. And so the church that I was raised in was a Jesuit um, kind of like haven. So we always had a lot of scholars. So a lot of the people, the men of the cloth that are Jesuits tend to be more scholarly. And so they research open-minded. and they write. Yeah. And so they definitely have a bit more of an open-minded attitude for most things. So, you know, versus Father Baron, who was just like insane. Yeah, he was the, terrible. The gross side. Like and if she had if she had said it to him, he would have had her burned as a witch way sooner. Yeah. And so one thing that I do kind of miss that we touch upon a lot in the book is when she when he finds her in the chapel and she was like, Oh no, I was sitting here alone. And he was like, Were you really sitting here alone? Because mm-hmm. a lot of her internal monologue is she's feeling a lot of the like the magic and the mystery it is to like sit in an empty chapel yeah. in the middle of the night. Mm-hmm. Um, and then like just the added presence of him coming in. And I've just, chill- I've chills talking about it because that's what I like about religion. Cause there is a level of magic to it. Mm-hmm. So that's why I, I there's think there's a that lot of magic to it. Yeah. <laughs> it's mostly magic. Yeah. Just to <laughs> the right of paganism. Yeah, it's like so mostly magic. Yeah. Come on. We, we, all we did is like, we're going to take this and then we're going to do this to it. And then we're good. Yeah. That's so, it. So, um, yeah. Cause Hey, spoiler alert guys, if you're taking the Eucharist, it's basically a blood rite. So, you know. <gasps> No, <laughs> I know. What? But, but so, and I love that. Like, I mean, he made it make sense for himself. He yeah. was like, "You're a miracle. That's mm-hmm. what it is. God does miracles all the all time. time. So, why would you traveling back two hundred plus years in the future? Why would that not be a miracle?" Yeah, I love that. I love the whole thing. Like, I, I mean, we talked about it a little bit. Her relationship with religion, because you're right, she is mostly agnostic. Because her, her uncle Lamb was a scholar mm-hmm. and an archaeologist, and so he wasn't doing taking her to church or anything like that. And so it's sort of like, you know, I imagine that when she fills out census forms, she checks Church of England. But yeah, oh, yeah. you know, it's like kind of whatever. Um, but there is, I mean, I've been to like, I mean, countless cathedrals mm-hmm. and churches in America and Europe, and. There is a beauty and like a fascination to them just because of sort of what they represent and stuff. And so I definitely am like on her team about that. And also I do like it also the little thing where he says, were you really alone? Because she's fucking pregnant. Yeah. So no, yeah. not really. Is she really alone? Nope. Cause it, it's like a double meaning thing. Cause it's like, no, the like, you know, the spirit is here as well, but mm-hmm. also uh, mm-hmm. there's a baby in there. Um, yeah, which I we talked about that a little too. I do love that she it, because when I first read the book, I did not guess that she was pregnant. Oh, me neither at all. And I think when I watched the show, I was far enough removed from the book that I had forgotten mm-hmm. that she was pregnant. And I just remember being like, "Oh, this is like really really well handled vomiting because she's vomiting in circumstances that were very stressful. That would that are puke worthy. Yeah, that would cause vomiting on their own. Yeah." Without being pregnant. And I... Well, because we're also shown... Jamie keeps puking, too. Yeah. So, there's just a lot of vomit. that yeah. have also, also, trigger warning. Yeah. <laughs> if you people, are... People don't like barf. Yeah, yeah, if you're susceptible to vomit. But it's one of my favorite things because so many TV shows handle the, like, realizing you're pregnant by, like, oh, you're vomiting at an inopportune moment. And mm-hmm. it's just like, I mean, fine. But I think this is so much better because by the time she... By the time we realize... She's telling Jamie. Yeah. She's like saying the words to Jamie. And then you're like, oh. Mm -hmm. Because had you not said it when you did, I still like completely, completely gone. Because I'm like, oh, no, that happens in France. Because that's all. Well, I mean, yes, she is pregnant in France. But it's like, that's always what it is. It's like the woman vomits at an inopportune time or she goes to the doctor and finds out she's anemic. And I'm just like, in every TV show I've ever watched where there's like an unplanned pregnancy. Mm -hmm. And I'm or like a where you're like just finding out. And I'm just sort of like, there has to be another like way that we can indicate this. And it's always so fraught. And I that's the thing is it's like, it's fraught in this episode, but it's fraught for a different reason. Right. It's because she's under so much stress. Mm-hmm. And I'm glad that we didn't, I'm weirdly glad that we didn't have the moment where she feels the wind in her belly. Yeah. Since Jenny tells her that and she didn't have like the, oh, 
you know, mm-hmm. like we do, we do later when she feels the baby move for the of first course. time, which I mean, I, we, we should have that. Yeah. Um, but I'm really glad that almost it was like kind of an afterthought, but it's still a very present thing because when you're a woman, life doesn't stop because you're knocked up and you're puking everywhere. Yeah. So I just saw that, um, this episode was directed by a woman Ooh. You can fucking tell. You can super you can tell. Absolutely tell. Because even during the scenes with um with Jack and uh Jamie, it's handled with like a lot of care. Mm-hmm. And so I will say only Sam Hewen and Tobias Menzies were on set. I love that. Yeah. And both cast and well, I mean they're like the cast, the crew was mm-hmm. obviously, but then it says both cast and crew described the shoot as exhausting, emotionally draining, and very hard to watch. Yeah. Which it is, but I do, I love it. And we mentioned it, um, one of my favorite things about it is how good the acting is. Mm-hmm. I, like, I don't really know how to use my words to talk about no, it. Because they, it's, it's, it's hellish to watch. Yeah. But like, and I feel weird saying this, but like, I think the thing that's so interesting about it is that I feel like when Tobias Menzies and Sam Hewen both got cast and read the book and everything, I think that they they read this scene and were like, I can't fucking wait to do oh, that. Oh, yeah, because as an actor, this is such a meaty, yeah. such a meaty thing to experience. And you do have to pull things out of yourself that if, I mean, if I had the option to experience those emotions, I would say, no, thank you. Yeah, because I, I don't want to do that. But it's also weirdly beautiful because it's looking at an aspect of yourself that you may not elect to experience. So it kind of makes you more well-rounded as a person. But there's nothing more frustrating than doing, being very intimate with your scene partner and going to depths that you've done a lot of work to get to and your scene partner not responding in kind. Oh my God, I can't imagine. But both of these people showed the fuck up to work. And it is fascinating and beautiful to watch because this is like you said it's horrifying and disgusting and awful but to have that trust with your scene oh, partner yeah. to experience something so awful mm-hmm. and then on Tobias Menzies part to be the one that's causing and inflicting that pain yeah. and trauma wow mm-hmm. I mean to and, and then the con- I, I would love to have been in the rooms for those conversations between those two actors where it's like you are consenting to allow another human yeah. being to do that to you. And like to, to be Tobias Menzies, to be like, I have to, yeah. and, I'm, and I'm sorry. So I'm, I'm curious about the aftercare conversation. Oh my and- God. Could you imagine now I just want like a photograph of them just like snuggling after. Yeah. Just like, or like having like tea. Yeah. And that's the, the tea part the tea for me. Part for me. Oh <laughs> my God. Actually, I feel like there's probably a lot of whiskey. Certainly some whiskey for yeah, sure. But it's just, it's, it's beautiful and heartbreaking and just I it leaves me gobsmacked every time. Yeah, which is not I don't watch this scene very often. No, yeah. This episode just because it is so it's it's a lot. It hurts. It does. It's really, <laughs> it's really, really tough to watch. Mm-hmm. And I think because it's like because it's so realistic, like it feels real. And I will say that um something else semi similar to this, but there is an attempted rape in Buffy mm-hmm. and it's I mean, it's one of my favorite episodes of the show. It's mm-hmm. one of my favorite character moments in the show. And it's a very similar thing where I kind of feel that Tobias Menzies might feel the same way if we ever like had an interview with him. I haven't seen one. Um, but the actor, James Marsters, was like, that was literally the hardest day I've ever had at work mm-hmm. in my entire life. He was like, I didn't, it was like terrible. I'm like, he was like, I'm so proud of it mm-hmm. as like an actor, but it sucked doing. Mm-hmm. It like made me feel terrible. Yeah. And I just think that kind of stuff is like, you know, you can make it, you can make it make sense for the moment and still feel bad about it as a human. You're not yeah. going to feel good about doing something like that, but that's the kind of shit I, and I love it was also, acting wise. And it was also really refreshing to see, I, this is going to sound bad and I, I, I don't, I feel bad saying it, but it's also nice seeing a rape scene that doesn't, it's not happening to a woman. Because well, sure. We just get that <laughs> It's constant. all the time. because Well, because it's like rape happens yeah. with, I mean, yeah. male, female, non-binary, whatever. It, it just, it fucking happens. And so it's just, it, it was refreshing to see that because men do get raped. Mm-hmm. They absolutely do. Yeah. And it doesn't get talked about enough. Yeah. And so... To, you know, and there's so much 
we have such a spotlight on Jamie and Claire and their romantic relationship and their heteronormative mm-hmm. relationship. And to see this aspect of it, which is like kind of upsetting because it's like we don't, we have a couple of gay characters, but I'm really glad that the gay character we get later is a little bit better. Yeah. So that's the thing too, that I think is so fascinating about Jamie as a character because it, and and Claire too, and Claire almost has more reason to to sort of like dislike gay characters because she's from the 40s through the 60s. Mm-hmm. The 60s is the part where it gets really troublesome. And but the thing is, is like in the 1700s, it was just sort of fine as long as you didn't talk about it. Because yeah, you we've were already, dandy. We've already discussed the Duke of Sandringham, mm-hmm. and they continue to have like a relatively fruitful relationship with the Duke of Sandringham to a point. But <laughs> fruitful. The thing <laughs> about the the gay character that comes later is what it says to me about Jamie, which is that he really mostly doesn't care. Yeah. He's just cool. He's like, whatever, but like not, it's not me. As long as you're not trying to bugger me, it's fine. Against my will. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Because I mean, people, like we said in a couple episodes ago, it was like, everyone's trying to give it to Jamie, which I mean, (laughs) who would not? Yeah. So, you know, but as long as like you're cool about it, I don't give a shit. Yeah. And I and I, and I like that despite this experience, it doesn't color his reaction later. A hundred percent. Yeah. That's because, exactly what I was trying to say. Because I mean, he he absolutely could have every right to be as closed off to it as possible, yeah. but he still would rather look at the person and the soul rather than yeah. the action. Because it's very clear that Jack Randall is a fucking sadist. A, a bad man. Yeah. Like a sadist and a bad man. And just a demon. <laughs> yeah. And and like the character we get later is not a bad man. No. And so that I think is the huge difference. And so that's the kind of that's the kind of shit that I I love about this show and the characterization. And I think what you said about it usually being a woman who's being raped, I think part of that is because this book series was written by a woman Mm -hmm. and there is a like it's a co-created the show is co-created by a woman the woman who wrote it is a producer you know it's like all of the all of these women are involved um and i think that that's part of the reason why yeah and i mean and there are other rapes that come later and there are there's one that's like particular i mean they're all horrific but there's one that's like particularly horrific later um uh, I haven't got probably, there yet. No, I know not. about it, but I haven't got there yet. <laughs> so, it, I mean, and it just because of the time period, I mean, I, that's just, it, it is what happens. Yeah. But it just, it's it's nice at least having a mirrored experience. Mm-hmm. Um, and then especially for a couple that can have something in common, yeah. as awful and troublesome as it is. Well, they also don't have it in common for like 30 years. Mm-hmm. So. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but still, cause I still count that one attack from that British officer. I mean, he's yeah. still, we don't, we don't know how close he got, you know, but still it is yeah. a really gross man that is naked from the waist down, laying on top of you, trying to insert himself inside you. Yeah, it's gross. It's still, gross no matter what. Yeah. Woof. But so mm-hmm. we, as we're learning more about what happened with Randall and Jamie, um, we see a lot of conversations happening in Gaelic, mm-hmm. which are not translated on the bottom, but basically we we figure out that like Jamie has no will to live at this point. Like he he, just, he also is asking like everyone to kill him. Yeah, he's not eating. Yeah. It's bad. Um, he's basically letting Claire fix his wounds and tend to his wounds against his will. And he's yeah. just like, I don't care. So mm-hmm. do whatever you must. Um, and so Myrta tells Claire that like if it gets to a point that Jamie's wasting away, he's not going to allow that to happen, and yeah. he's just going to put him out of his misery. Yeah. And so Jamie's like, or Claire is basically like, what am I supposed to do with my husband who wants to die? Like, it's insane. And she says, let's do some mind games. She goes, I'm ready. <laughs> let's do it. Yeah. And so she fucking fights him. And but she, f- before she fights him, she douses herself in lavender. Oh, oil. yeah. So it is like immersive therapy yeah. just to rip him right into it and out of it. Yeah. And it's just like, no, I am Claire. I am Claire. I am not Randall. I am Claire. Yeah. And you have to tell me I need to understand if we are to move forward. And that's finally when he like kind of snaps out of it and tells her about everything and is like, this is what happened. You know, like, you know, I, I liked it at a certain point mm-hmm. and, you know, it's all this stuff. And I'm just sort of like, you know, sometimes the human body and the brain and the psyche all get together and they're like, we're going to get you out of this. And yeah, we're just going to nope right out of and here. And in order to get you out of this, 
you're going to have to do something. Mm -hmm. And I just feel like there's no shame in that. No, not at all. And like, you know, when it comes to surviving, just fucking literally not. Just survive, man. Mm -hmm. Be like that woman that got her arms chopped off and packed them in mud (laughs) and clawed her way back up the ravine to Mm -hmm. get rescued. Do Mm -hmm. that. Be like that. I just like, I'm just kidding. So hypocritical. I would just die in the ditch. I'm like, I'm like, I can't do it. I can't do it. I mean, I would kind of check in with myself and be like, all right. So like, if we're, are we still at home? Is that what's happening? What are the am chances? I, am I not? Am I not dead yet? Okay. So clearly, I'm not meant to die. So I guess like, let's just kind of. Right, let's then, let's try. Let's yeah. Try. No, I because I definitely think that my brain. I think I would just kind of like separate and then just like go into like the small space in the back mm, of my head yeah. and then just kind of let your lizard brain take oh, over. Oh, one hundred percent. Yeah, one hundred percent. Because I mean, I've had experiences, you know, very traumatic experiences. That I don't remember a lot of it. My body was there. I was mm, not there. Interesting. Um, so people will tell me about a lot of stuff, and I'm like, I don't know. Sure. <laughs> so sounds right. You were dealing with my machine at that point. <laughs> sounds like it could have happened. <laughs> yeah, you, le- you left a message at the beep. Oh, no. <laughs> so, yeah, but you know, and they're like, really, you couldn't tell, and I'm like, I don't know how because I yeah. know that I was not being myself. But your brain does what it needs to do to get you through it. And your body will do the exact same thing. Mm-hmm. And there is absolutely no shame whatsoever. Yeah. Which is what Claire tells him. Yeah. She's like, look, it's like, you know, you just got to, you got to power through. Like, there's nothing. I don't feel differently about you. Mm-hmm. The, the men don't feel differently about you. Well, and she also tells him, if you die, I die. No, uh, pretty That's much, just what yeah. it is. Like, yeah, I'll, I'll no. kill myself mm-hmm. too. So because it's like, it's like the, she, and she says that if there's any reason for this whole thing happening, it's for you and me. Yeah. Which I firmly believe because it's like, this is, this is why you're here. Love it. Yeah. And which, I mean, if I were Jamie on that end of it, I'd be like, yeah, I mean, I feel like you're kind of right. Yeah. So. so they end up basically uh, getting rid of the brand mm-hmm. on him. Um, and then he, he like feels. They throw it. Good. They throw that chunk of flesh in the fire and he spits, spits on, on it. it. <laughs> pretty good. It's pretty solid. It's, yeah. It's pretty solid. I would do too. And then they uh, make way for Paris because the Frasers and the Mackenzies both have family in Paris and they're going to go there and see what they can do. And they decide that they're going to try to change the future, mm-hmm. which is also very fun. And then Claire says that she's pregnant and Jamie gets happy about mm-hmm. it, which is very nice. Yes, it is very nice. I also really like the fact that Claire had the presence of mind in that moment because Willie was like, you know, Mr. F- Frazier, don't you have family mm. in France? Weren't you trying to get back to them when we first met you? And she just very coolly, she was like, well, it's my husband's, my late husband's family. Mm. I don't think they would take very kindly to me in my current situation. <laughs> if that were me, I'd go, what? What, what are you I, talking I, about? What? I would just be blank face. Well, okay, so <laughs> that's very funny because I also, in the previous episode, when she's like, Jonathan Wolverton Randall, date of birth, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, you remember when he was born? And you remember when he dies? I wouldn't remember either one of those things. I feel like a weird part of me would march right down to like the depths of my memory and yank and just those yank out. It yeah, out. Just I out mean, of spite. Yeah. Oh no, I feel like there had to have been something framed in their fucking house. Frank seems like the type well, that would have a document of, sure. of like his, his enlistment or yeah. some kind of fucking military contract, something in his house. So that is what they were doing with the reverend mm-hmm. was like d- tr- tracing that guy back. And I feel like Claire was just like around for too many conversations. Yeah. And she just like absorbed it. And I bet you he talked about him so Constantly. much. And like, God, fuck this guy. Yeah. Well, doubly fuck him now. Yeah. <laughs> Super, triple, quadruple. So yeah. Mm. We are headed to Paris. Season two has the best dresses. Oh, I'm so excited. Yeah. So um, I don't know what this release schedule is going to look like. So I don't know what it's going to look like when season when we finally start recording season two. Um, but if you guys like this, let us know. And we will absolutely cover season, like keep covering seasons until we're caught up. Um, also, likely we are going to record the new season. Mm-hmm. So we'll cover that live um, if you are at all. Actually, that'll have already been happening. Once this is out, so <laughs> when is it February or March? I thought it was February. If it's March, then we might have time. I don't know. I feel like there's so many things happening in March, and so March sixth. Oh, so even okay. Still though, that's only like eight weeks, and there's 16 episodes. So yeah, uh, you will have already seen the entirety of season <laughs> six. So, but we will likely come back with um the rest of the seasons uh two through five in the interim. So mm-hmm. yeah, um yeah, just follow along. 
You can like and subscribe. You can follow us on Twitter at So I'm Watching, Instagram at So I'm Watching. Um, if you are at all interested in donating a little money to us, you can do so here below. And then, yeah, we'll see you next time. Au revoir. Bye.